Yamish, you are on the ground. Tell me, take me through, take me through what part of the story he's denying. He accepts that the child that she's talking about is his child. What is she, de is he denying that he had a say in both the pregnancy that, that they decided to terminate? And the, I mean, what, 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 what part of the story are we now to believe he doesn't accept as truth? Well, there's a lot going on with this story, Nicole. So it's it doesn't sound surprising that you're a little confused by all these facts here, as so many other people that I've been talking to are. Let's remember that I should say I'm in wildly I'm in Wadley, Georgia, um, where Herschel Walker just a few hours ago was here holding a campaign event. He is denying it all. He's denying that this happened. He's denying that he knows this woman. He's denying that she that this abortion happened. That he had anything to do with this. He is saying that this is all a lie. That it's a distraction by Democrats. Um, he's also saying, and I pressed him on this specifically, I said, well, what about the fact that this is your family? This is your son, Christian Walker. And this woman says, a mother of your children, saying that you are a liar, that you can't be trusted. He told me that these people are being used basically by the left to hurt him. I should also note that there are national Republicans who are sticking with him. But in the state of Georgia, the lieutenant governor is voicing unease here. He's saying that even the staunchest Republicans they're starting to be, quote, rattled by the drip, drip, drip of information. He also said that this baggage that Herschel Walker is carrying, that it's becoming, quote, his words, unbearable. So it really tells you that there is a little bit of politics going on here. This is a state where one or two percent of the vote makes all the difference um, in a state that is so close because the Senate race is so close and critical to Republicans trying to win back control. But it's Herschel Walker defiant, saying that everything that's happening, everything that people are saying is completely false. Um, Yamish, I usually agree with you on everything. I think this is not a drip. This is a gusher. Um, I'm so glad you mentioned uh, the lieutenant governor, Republican Lieutenant Governor Duncan's comments, because everything that is being thrown up there um, is being knocked out of the water. It is the Republicans in the state who share the horror at the revelations. Let me, let me play that sound for you. This is Republican Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan. Even the most staunch Republicans, I think, are rattled at the continued flow of information. Uh, I think every Republican knew that there was baggage out there, and uh, but the weight of that baggage is starting to, to feel a little closer to unbearable at this point. Some of the stuff could have gotten cleaned up in the primary if we would have given an honest look in, in an honest primary <laughs> that, that would have looked uh, hard at somebody's leadership skills. If we're being intellectually honest, Herschel Walker uh, won the primary because he scored a bunch of touchdowns back in the 80s, and he was Donald Trump's friend. And now we've moved forward several months on the calendar, and that's no longer a recipe to win. Gimish, that's brutal. I mean, and that's brutal than anything I've seen any Democrat, Democratic uh, elected officials in Georgia say. Certainly. And we should remind people that the lieutenant governor who said that, he's not up for re-election. So he's up to, he's in some ways speaking a little free, more freely than maybe other Republicans who are up for re-election in the state. Um, what we're hearing from Democrats are, the, the, and the Democrats that I've talked to on the ground here, is that this is embarrassing. That was literally the word that they used. They said Herschel Walker doesn't have the character to serve in the U.S. Senate. And they thought that he didn't have the character way back when he was first facing domestic abuse allegations, which he's also facing, which Christian Walker has also been talking about, saying that he, Herschel Walker, that he almost killed him and his mother. So really what you see here are Democrats saying that this was someone who should never have been in the position to run. I talked to a voter who said the only reason why he's here is because he supports Donald Trump. And that voter told me, and when you support Donald Trump, you can have, quote, any kind of morals. So there's a real sense here from on the Democratic side that this is really more par for the core of a, for a Republican Party that has really changed the way it deals with candidates who have a lot of scandals. The big question, though, is, is this going to impact the race? One or two percent makes the difference here. But I should tell you, when I'm talking to voters, they're in their camps. I even talked to some women who tell me that even if this is true, even if Herschel Walker is lying today, if this all happened, they're still sticking with Herschel Walker because he's an opponent of abortion and is an opponent of abortion even in cases of rape or incest. So Republicans here saying that he's now on the right track, even if he made a, quote, mistake in their eyes. Nicole. Rick, when did we cross this... Um into this sort of matrix where someone who is, by the, by the traditional political standards, morally unacceptable, um, maybe standards that are, that are, you know, quaint antiques now, um, and decide that a person that Republican um, Jeff Duncan described as only winning, quote, because he scored a bunch of touchdowns back in the 80s and he's Donald Trump's friend, is, is now preaching a policy 
where no woman in America, he supports a national ban on abortion. Um, he's open to bans with no exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. And he sat down, allegedly, with a partner, and they made this choice to terminate a pregnancy. And, and according to the Daily Beast reporting, um, the same partner with whom he had a years-long relationship, they also brought another child into the world. No woman in America would get to have those conversations or deliberations in Herschel Walker's America. It's, it's true, Nicole. And what it tells you about the contemporary Republican Party is that the things that were what we thought were defining characteristics of a acceptable candidate in, when, when, when we were in the Republican Party in the distant past, things like moral character and personal responsibility and integrity and holding to what you believe in, those things are completely out of the picture now. Those things are have been subsumed into a party that wants victory. They want more judges. They want the control of the Senate so that they can execute on on on, on the on the the narrow set of ideological checklist setups they want. They don't believe in anything. They'll get there however they can. And the the shock and the tragedy of this is really that there's a people that that Herschel Walker. He has shown how badly he'll destroy people in his own life. He has shown how much damage he will cause. The Republicans were aware of this, Nicole, well before this this stuff all broke. Mitch McConnell and his people were desperately trying to bump Walker out of this race back in the primary. They had this opposition research back then. They didn't they didn't let the world know, but they let a lot of insiders know that Herschel's skeleton closet was like a like a like a graveyard convention. It was you know things like this and beyond. He's a destructive person. He's not a morally acceptable person in the in in the in the the realm of any kind of candidate. And if the Republicans had the shoe on the other foot, they would be losing their damn minds. Rick, it also speaks to the hypocrisy of the evangelical movement itself. What, what are they about? Again, they, they are about power. They are about achieving the things that they can't achieve in society or in legislation. They want to do, they want the things they want th purely through, you know, the power of the courts. They see the Senate as that single vector to achieve that for themselves. And, and look, they, they're very open about what they want next. They, they, view that their their great victory on, on Roe is not enough. They want to move next to eliminating gay marriage, eliminating gay adoption. They want to move next to restricting more and more rights of privacy and more and more rights of agency for folks in this country to fit in with their religious view. They, they will take any vector to get there, though. And, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a good enough biblical scholar to tell you, but I think there's some warnings about using the wrong road to get to the right place.